Hi, my name is Justin Treadway, and I'm a Technical Account Manager with the Globalscape support team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run reports from EFT, as well as some of the features of the Auditing and Reporting module. So the first thing that I've gone ahead and done is I've logged on to my Arcus server as the site administrator. So the main tab that we're going to want to use in this instance is the Reports tab which can be seen up here in the top left corner. I'll go ahead and click that. So by default, we have this Globalscape Reports folder with a list of pre-configured reports that are built into the server. These can all be seen in greater detail in our online help documents, but I'll go over a few here for you to begin with. So the first one that I want to look at is the Event Rules Activity Summary. So by single clicking on this, we can see on the right hand side that the report has not yet run and the reason behind that is we can set up filters if we wanted to run all of these filters are going to be specific to the event rule that you've selected and they will all have specific identifiers if you wanted to for example with this with this report we can select the event ID, the site name, event name, event type, various other filters to narrow down if we want to look at a specific event. From there, we then choose the date that we want the report to show. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the beginning of the month up until today's date. I will go ahead and click Show Report. And from here, we can see our report has run successfully. And this is going to be, again, an example of a report. You will have different information based on the usage of your server. If you run a report that has a large number of pages, you will only see a certain number of pages when you run the report in this view screen. Now, you can save the report and see the full number, or you can run a report through an event rule and save it as a file and you can see the full report there as well. Now you would have to have several you, you would have to have several pages in order to hit that limit, but we won't hit it in this case. So on this report screen, we can go ahead and see first of all that we have two pages here. We can also see various tabs here. We have the event name, the date and time that it ran, condition values, and the result, whether it succeeded or failed. It also breaks it down further by site. So if we had multiple sites, we would see this here as the support one. If we had a support two site, then we could see that broken down as well. Under the site, we have the event type. So it will break it down by type so that you can easily find, if you're looking for a specific rule, what type of rule each one is. Then the next line here is going to be the actual name of the event rule that ran, as can be seen up here. So the event rule here is called on file uploaded rule. The type of rule is a file uploaded, and it ran on the support one site. It ran on January 16th, and the user that triggered this rule to go off is test user, and whatever this rule did, it succeeded. Now, let's say we want to get a little bit more detailed information about that. We have a activity detailed report that we can then run. And we'll go ahead and run this report for the same dates so I can show you a little bit of the differences. We have several of the same categories here, with the exception of a new one being parameters. So we have this same on file uploaded rule ran on the 16th of January, triggered by test user, and it succeeded. Now, from here, we can see a little bit about what this rule did. It ran, a file was uploaded to this local path, and then transferred to this other remote path. Now, let's say we're having problems with a particular event rule. In this case, I saw it right here, this arm test, it failed. So we want to get a little bit more information as to the failures, or let's say we only want to see failures. Now we have that pre-configured under this troubleshooting rule. So I'll go ahead and click on this troubleshooting rule. And this time 
we'll set it up as a filter. So we'll set event name equals. Now you do have several different options if you don't know the full name of the event rule, or if you have several event rules that, for example, start with the same name. You can set it up to start with the same name and only show those event rules. So this is why naming is very important. But in this case, we will just do the arm test rule and we'll run it for the same date. Now, if you noticed when I did choose which filter I wanted to use, this AND and OR operator became available for me to use. So if I want to add more filters, I can do that there. Now we'll go ahead and show this report and we can see only the ARM test rule and we can see all of the times that it failed. So this can kind of help you with your troubleshooting. Now you do have other event rules that are available to you such as various activities, um, you can see various connections. If you wanted to see, again, working off the failures, we can see connection errors. I will run no filters and show the report for January. And we can see various connection errors here. So in this instance, we have the date and time, the remote IP, the port they tried to connect over, protocol, the username and password, that they attempted to use, as well as this category right here is generally the most beneficial being the protocol result ID. These are predominantly going to be FTP or again, working off of whatever protocol they're using those error codes. So in this instance, they are getting 530 errors. So they're getting, they're not allowed to log in or a bad password, that kind of error here. So in this case, I happen to know that we don't have a root user set up. So this is somebody trying to access the server. We may want to block them out. That can all be handled at a later time, but this is a good report to see that kind of information. You can also go in and see various users if you wanted to, if you wanted to see what a particular user was up to. So we have all users, which we can go in and we can see all of our users details as far as the particular user, the number of downloads and uploads they've performed, as well as the total kilobytes transferred. Now let's say we want to look at a specific user. So let's look at this GS test user. we want to look at a little bit more detailed information for that specific user. So we will go ahead and click on this activity by user. So when we run this report, we're then prompted with a required parameter. So this parameter we have to use, there's a few reports that require this, such as specific users. So I will enter the specific user that I want to look at and we can see detailed information about all of this user's transfers, whether they uploaded files to us, whether they downloaded files from us, various things, as well as protocols, their IP that they generally use, um, all of the resulting IDs. Again, this is going to be specific to the protocols, and we can see all of that information here. Now, this is a general idea about how the auditing and reporting module works and how various reports work. If you wanted to see more detailed information, like I mentioned previously, you can go look at our help, online help documents and they will go through each report and give you a little bit more detailed information about what to expect when you run each report. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.